Joining us now, House Majority Whip Tom Emmer. It's good to see you again, sir. You've likely seen the story about the Education Department. One in seven eighth grade students are failing U.S. history. We're also watching the hearings that you guys have been running down there in the House. Also we're watching Senate hearings. More and more Biden officials and nominees seem to not know the basics about the agency, agencies they lead or want to lead. Are we wrong? No, no, you're not wrong. And frankly, uh, what you're seeing come out of the Department of Education is, uh, well, it's, it's tragic, but not unexpected, especially when you saw Randy Weingarten, the leader of the teachers union nationally, uh, in front of uh, one of the House committees in the last week, uh, completely corrupted. I mean, you got a lot of great teachers out there across this country that are trying to put students first and their leadership in the union. Uh, they're not doing that. Randy Weingarten, in fact, tried to rewrite history in front of the committee by suggesting that she wasn't the one that's saying kids should not be back in school, that uh, you know they're, they're all going to be uh, at risk if we send them back to school. In fact, she did keep our schools closed uh, in great part across this country, Liz. And because of that, our kids have fallen way behind. I, the, so yeah. far, uh, none of the Democrats have been standing up for the parents and those children. House Republicans have. Yeah, and you know, so there's that, and the problem with the education department and teachers union, it's well taken what you're saying because many parents across the nation, we're hearing from them, they're really upset about what's going on in schools, and they're upset about what they see going on in the U.S. government. Let's please get your reaction to President Biden's agency, agency chiefs and nominees in action. Watch this. If we spent $50 trillion to become carbon neutral by 2050 in the United States of America, how, how much is that going to reduce world temperatures? This is a global problem. You can't tell me. Either that or you won't. Can you tell me what nation is the largest producer of refined lithium in the world? No, I can't. It's China. Can you tell me which nation is the largest producer of refined cobalt in the world? No, Senator. It's China. Do you know what nation is the largest exporter of natural graphite to the United States globally? No, Senator. It's China. Mr. Washington, can you quickly tell me uh, what airspace requires an ADSB transponder? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, not sure I can answer that question right now. So what are the six types of special use airspace that protect this national security that appear on FAA charts? Uh, sorry, Senator, I cannot answer that question. Uh, tell, tell me what Article 5 of the Constitution does. Article 5 is not coming to mind at the moment. Okay. How about Article 2? Neither is Article 2. Your reaction, Congressman, what do you think? Uh, listen, this administration reeks of incompetence, and it's reflected in the people that they put in these positions. Uh, you talk about the global supply chain that is broken down, and we have a mayor from South Bend, Indiana, who does uh, photo ops. Uh, you didn't have him in that uh, that uh, collage of uh, different uh, uh, testimony, but he's a perfect example. Uh, he's doing nothing to address the problems that uh, Americans are facing every day, uh, nor are any of these incompetent uh, uh, appointments either. And quite frankly, uh, they reflect the culture that's been set from the top I mean, with this president who's been less than competent himself. I mean, we're not, you know, we don't want to look like we're obnoxious know-it-alls, but Article 5 is that to have an amendment, you know, you, get, you need two-thirds of the states. And Article 2 is about, you know, impeachment on treason or bribery or other, uh, other crimes. I mean, this is like basic stuff. Uh, Liz, I think it uh, actually, it raises a big question about not just their competence for the job, but the staff that they have. These people are called to testify. It's scheduled ahead of time. These aren't surprise uh, events. Uh, they have plenty of professional staff, or they're supposed to, to prepare them for the questions that they're going to receive. You would think that they'd at least be prepared for the testimony yeah. they're going to give. But we not only were they uh, not prepared, but they just showed a level of incompetence that uh, is frankly staggering. The more and more polls, we're looking at Quinnipiac, Pew, uh, Monmouth, uh, Emerson, uh, Economist, YouGov, ABC, uh, Reuters, Ipsos polling. Uh, uh, voters are really turned off. They just want to see a government that cares. We've got the Supreme Court taking on a case. It could overturn the federal regulatory state. It seems squarely at killing off the, the nearly four-decade-old Chevron precedent. So we've got that. What they want to feel like is the people go into D.C., know the Constitution, know the Bill of Rights, know the amendments, and at least, uh, to what you're saying, no, get ready for hearings. And they seem out to lunch and that they don't care. 
And that's a real turnoff to the American people, especially the men and women who fought for our nation. I would totally agree. And Liz, I would add, not only do they want the people that they're sending to Washington, D.C., those of us that they have hired to be their voice, to understand that we're there to do things that are good for the country, right? They want Republicans and Democrats uh, working for the better of Americans and America. But they also do expect, uh, this is a customer service business, that our elected officials make those decisions. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that our Supreme Court will overturn the administrative state and restore representative government. And give you guys back your power. I mean, let's face it, Congressman, Congress has been circumvented. I mean, the, this president has spent, I think, one estimate said a trillion bucks without Congress's you know, power of the purse and oversight there. Congressman Emmer, it's good to see you. We'll have you back on. Have a good weekend.